Esper mid-range as a mirror match, something that they will have played quite a bit of, I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one of the top three decks you would expect kind of coming into this. Now it's not really close. It's just the deck to kind of play. And, you know, a lot of different teams brought slight variations to their list, but ultimately it's the same thing, right? I'm trying to curve out. I got my Rafine. I got my... I got my four drops, so you know it, it, it's it's as 50-50 as it gets here. So um, one of the most important things, actually, in this matchup is something uh, is whether or not you go first, player draw. Th this type of deck, you've seen the matches. They actually don't go as long as you might expect no. for um, your typical mid-range matchup. No. The, the, the 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 games tend to kind of snowball, and it's you know whoever kind of gets off to that fast start with the Rafine and the four drop. That tends to kind of come out on uh, come out ahead. So, really, really important to make sure if you're on the draw, ideally you have an answer for that turn three Rafine. We'll take a look here because Logan is going to be on the draw here. Jim Davis won the die roll. Ooh, that's slow. And okay. Mulligan into a Mulligan. It looks like. Yeah, that's just at first glance. That's just a one lander. And and that's going to have to be a keep. But if we're on five here, if you're sitting in Jim Davis's seat. Yeah, that's a keep and. Uh, Logan Nettles, with the extremely defensive hand here, has kind of answers to all the different threats, right, that this deck can play kind of in the, the early turns of the game. You've got the Destroy Evil for the enchantments. You've got the Infernal Grasp. You have the Void Rend. You don't have to pay the ward cost, right, if there is a Rafine that gets into play in turn three. So down to four cards here for Jim Davis after having played land number one into Igonjo. And it looks like Denik's going to kick off the festivities here for Jim Davis. Jim's got his music going. Logan, lots of different options here. Have to consider the fact that Jim could go turn three land Rafine, right? Yes. So right now you can play a Denik and, and think, okay, well, I'm just going to block. I'm going to have a blocker in play. But at the same time, if you do and Jim goes Rafine, attack, put make a 3-4 Denik, all of a sudden things get a little more awkward. You can see Tenacious Underdog and Infernal Grasp for the other options. And he's going to go with the Underdog here. Jim found the Rafine. That was the Rafine. Yeah. Land no situation's a little rough. Lands here. So what's, what's Jim going to do here? Go for the ultra aggressive line of killing the blocker and getting in there and hoping? Yeah, that's exactly what's going to happen here. Two life goes away. Two life will come right back, though, to Jim Davis as he uh, blasts in for two. But if you're sitting in Logan's seat, that mulligan to five really hurt Jim here as he misses a land drop and has to make a suboptimal play this early in the game. Yeah, absolutely. And Logan now recognizing, okay, I got the Void right now. I have the ways to kill the Rafine. That's maybe how I lose this game if, if, if you do that. So I'm just going to pass. I don't mind taking two. If you don't do anything, end of turn, I can go ahead and grasp this Denic or use the Void Rend to, I guess, be a little more efficient with your mana. Sure. This also plays around Make Disappear. Uncounterable is a thing. Deserted Beach off the top of the library here. No missed land drops thus far for Logan Nettles. Those are all on Jim's side of the battlefield where he has now missed his land three times. Going to be extraordinarily difficult to come back from and, this and spot. Yeah, I was going to say, I think Logan's just going to intercept her anything yes. that Jim plays here. He's going to get a connive trigger. Yeah. Could and choose to grow it by discarding the Denik here. Right. The, the graveyard, not the worst place for Denik to be anyway. He's going to send that tenacious underdog right back to hand. A tempo play like that, very devastating in a position like this. Yeah, and I mean, J Jim just hasn't found any land, so he can't really keep up with what Logan's been doing here. So. Yeah, it feels like this game's just about over at this point. Tenacious underdog has another missed land drop here Ooh. for Davis. Yeah, I mean, you can just go ahead and just grasp the underdog, get in for seven, play wedding announcement, make a token. I mean, they're just... Not yeah. much you can do to come back from this. Yeah, he could add his own underdog to the battlefield here for maximums. Really tough spot here for Davis, you know, in the sense of right. never really had a chance in this game. I mean, not a lot of thought process had to go into this. Right. <laughs> you know, just it, player just, it is what it is. Yeah. But, uh, but of course, not how you want to kick off your round here. And now has the ability to either just stack the clue 
or go ahead and kill. The magic odds always give you the land the turn that it didn't matter anyway. Right. right? That, that's yeah. how this game works. Dodges the do, <laughs> dodges the destroy evil, but not going to matter here. Clue token's going to get sacrificed here as well, and there's dodges a that cut too. down that doesn't hit it. But you can see that um, Logan is eyeing that tenacious underdog. And even with a block, that would put Jim down to two. Which is exactly what we're going to see here. Jim's locked in, though. He's in the mode. He knows what's up. Just thinking about the sideboard options here. You really want to win that die roll, but then when you do, you have to mulligan to five. It does set you back. Yeah. The missed yeah. land drops are really tough, too. So that's game number one going to Logan Nettles, and that was... Easy one. I failed to mention the drawing lands and spells part of, yeah. uh, of the keys that I matched. Right. I just assumed, you know, it was a thing. So, But, you know, it's interesting because the thing that you said did play out. It was one-sided that started. way. But it is one of those things where it snowballs, right. right? Like, this is not the type of matchup where somebody plays something, somebody plays another thing, and then they cancel each other out and you have to kind of go over the top. Instead, it's like, if I get to have this thing stick on the battlefield, I'm going to be able to start attacking. It's going to start growing, you know, connive off of any number of these cards, but particularly uh, Rafine means that there's not a lot of sitting around staring at each other. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And Logan, and I, I think also in this matchup, you're going to see players sideboard very differently depending on whether or not they're on the play or the draw here. As you can see, Logan on the draw choosing not to keep those Kaido Shizukis in, right? That's the that's the type of card that helps snowball in, you know, when you're on the play. But right. when you're on the jaw, doesn't do a whole lot here. Meanwhile, on Jim's side, he's on the play. He's happy to play those Kaitos. A little bit surprised. I, I would have guessed that Logan may have considered bringing in that fourth cutdown that he's got in the sideboard there, just because it's so important to have answers to the early drops. Well, he's got 54 draw. seconds to put it in if you'd like. Nope, didn't go for it. Yeah, and the, uh, the, car, uh, the card that Logan is playing that me not many other players are playing are those obscure interceptors, right? Mm -hmm. And it seems like he really does like it in this matchup as he's got all four, uh, excuse me, all three after sideboard. Wow. Yeah, clearly a powerful card. It has had a hard time finding a steady home, but you'll see it pop up every once in a while. And every time it goes on the stack, it's like, wow, that that was really good. Right. And Jim ideally wants a quicker start here, right? Especially if you're on the play, but this hand does have all the all the colors. Boy, you have a, a grasp, one. you have an emperor, and you know, you, you start thinking about mulling the six and then going, oh well, what if I have to mull the five? Right. Then it's just over. And we saw what happened in game one there, didn't we? So he's gonna go ahead and keep it. He would love to see a Rafine or some other three mana card to kind of fill out the gap here. Use the Infernal Grasp to kill something and then play something before playing the Wandering Emperor. And Logan also on a mulligan here, probably keeping this hand, but just trying to figure out what he wants the bottom. I mean, Spell Pierce, Spell looks Pierce. A rough, yeah. Spell, Spell Pierce looks tough, but at the same time, can't cast light of the other blue cards in hand either. However, Rafine and Voidren, of course, much more powerful options. Right. They're also the type of card that you can draw the blue and play the card proactively, either putting Rafine down or killing something with Voidren. Well, Spell Pierce is right. kind of a nightmare in a situation like this. All right. So a mulligan here for Logan Nettles, though he isn't at five like Jim was, but he'll return the favor and at least go down to six perhaps a sportsmanship-like move there. <laughs> Not so much, huh? All right, Tenacious Underdog's going to go on the stack. And, and it's going to resolve. Logan here with, with the, oh, no, no blue source. I was going to mm. say it's a fantastic start. However, does have a waiting announcement, still has something to do on turn three here. And a draw step. Right? Oh. Ugh, that is a blue source, but that's uh, a tapped version. That's about as awkward as it gets, right? Yeah. Because... You, you play that next turn, and then you just can't play any of the other cards in your hand. Right. You probably do want to attack and play a wedding announcement here. It feels like not playing wedding announcement as early as possible would be a very bitter pill to swallow for Logan Nettles just to get his mana under him. So Infernal Grasp is going to keep the life total as high as possible here for Jim, and we're going to see wedding announcement hit now. 
And he'll go ahead and get a 1-1 one -one out of the deal before passing the turn back. Oh, oh, shielder the apocalypse off the top here for Jim, right on time. Yeah, could just choose to run it out here and force Logan to have a way to kill it. Currently, Logan does not, right? Does not have the blue source to kill it on upkeep. Of course, has that Rafine's tower, but will be a little bit delayed in being able to deal with the shielded. Logan, actually, not a fan of the card in the mirror. Boarded them mm. all out. And it looks like the Wandering Emperor is going to be a play here for Jim Davis. He's going to take his time. It's a pretty high upside play to resolve the Wandering Emperor here. You get to just make yeah. a 2-2 two -two and eat the 1-1, one -one, assuming that it all goes according to plan. Logan might just keep the 1-1 one -one back here because it's like, what do you, you have four men up. You probably have a Wandering Emperor. So yeah. very heads up here from Logan. Logan's no fool. And now he gets to feel like a wow, genius. Wow, you had it. Yeah. So now Wandering Emperor gets to make a 2-2. Two -two. Oh. And a Destroy Evil. That could be very handy on wedding announcement at some point. Yeah. Might want to just spend the mana this turn, right? And just put the Shieldred in play. However, if you do use the Destroy Evil, you do deny Logan a potential card or an extra token. Tough spot here for Logan taking a look at his hand. It looks quite nice, but you can see all of his spells are currently on the bench until next turn, in which case you'll be able to cast one of them. And that'll be true probably for the next few turns, so he's going to have to be very careful about exactly how he wants to do it. First, though, let's get this knight in here. Yeah, it's a relatively free attack here. Logan not interested in the double block here, given that the wedding announcement will be flipping next turn. Those 1-1s one will be able to cleanly trade with the 2-2s. Two but of course, Jim, of course, Jim does have that destroy evil. Oh, it's not a bad draw. Ship, shipwreck Marsh off the top of the library here for Logan. And when you see situations like that, this is exactly why Logan chose to board out the shield. It's like, Jim could have played it, right? And he yeah. just goes, you know what? I, I, I'm actually just not. I'm just going to yeah. wait, right? And if, if that's the case, then then should you actually even keep it in? Yeah, that's right? it. No, it makes sense. Okay, here's a destroy evil, though, for Jim Davis. Yeah, it's tough when you have a card like Shieldred in your hand for multiple turns. When you could have had it on the battlefield, just because every turn that thing's there, it's doing things, right? It's draining for two effectively every turn. But Jim had bigger problems to now, solve. Now, Logan can counter this, right? You mm. can sack a 1-1 one, one token here, cast Make Disappear, and Jim will not be able to pay, and can still play another one of his three drops in hand because he found that blue source. He could void rent. Logan Edel's really in the tank here about whether to let this resolve or not. It seems too tempting not to go for the make this appear, right? You, you sack a token and anyway. then you get a 2 2 and you just have yes. that anthem effect in play. Yeah, I'm with you. Jim could have considered just cast. If your plan was to pass, you could have considered, if, if you're going to kill the wedding announcement, you could have considered just killing it on your turn, right? Mm. There was no blue mana available for Logan. He had the Rafine's Tower tapped. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, he wanted to keep his options open, perhaps. I, you know, maybe he doesn't know that all the shield rids are out or something. Right, right. Could have kept it up for potential Rafine off the top. Right. Or in hand, rather. Or the Rafine in hand, as yeah, it turns out. Or the out. Rafine in hand. Yep. Okay, Anointed Peacekeeper is going to give Jim some info here. And now Logan's thinking, okay, do I want to just play this Void Red? Because if he names Void Red, all of a sudden Logan just, the, that three mana that he has available just evaporates. Right. And so much of this matchup is just putting permanence onto the board and utilizing all your mana every turn. That's right. He doesn't feel like he can afford to let that go. So he's going to use the Void Rend to kill Wandering Emperor. Peacekeeper will then resolve. And it can tax something. Probably Wandering Emperor would be my guess, just because you can pay the tax on the Rafine. Logan doesn't have land number six here just yet. can also choose cards that are not in hand. 
could so, could name Tenacious Underdog, although I highly doubt that. You're you're not usually incentivized to do so. Right. So it is going to be Wandering Emperor that gets named here. And as you said, that does make it uncastable until Logan finds another land. Right. And Jim might just choose to be a bit aggressive here. I know it's you have the Iganjo as a kind of a, a spell land option, but it's, it's also really tempting to just run out Shieldred unless he already played a land this turn. So both of these knights coming in, it's got to be tempting here for Logan to do some blocking. Facing down an anointed peacekeeper, he either... He, he may not be able to get in for a while. Looks like he's going to double block one of the knights this time. Oh, looks like he played a land already for the turn, but land number six. Okay, but Rafine hits the battlefield, and it's going to go ahead and attack as well. We're going to see Iganjo take down that token. Okay. Yes. And you keep the deserted beach in hand. You do need a land for the Emperor, but you may want to uh, have something to connive. All right. I think, I think it's shielded time unless Jim is set on waiting till there's mana available to protect the plaza. But that, that would require two more lands and playing out your Rufin's Tower, which at this point you likely want to cycle. Yeah, so he may just need to bite the bullet here. And that's what's going to happen. There's Shieldred, the Apocalypse, on the battlefield. And that is going to tax the proceedings going forward. Now, Jim does know about this Wandering Emperor, so you will not see that Shieldred get in there. Right. Although you do have the, um, the Plaza of Heroes. Interesting question here for Logan Nettles as well. He can attack with Rafine, but uh, the Connive Trigger will hurt. And he's going to leave it back. Wow. Great draw here from Jim Davis. Wow, destroy evil for Jim. There's an answer to Rafine, and he's got a nice board state here. He's got nine power out. He doesn't know about Wandering Emperor, so that's a consideration. As you mentioned, the shield would likely staying home. Yeah, if you if you kill the Rafine and pay for the ward cost, you will not have the mana here to keep up the Plaza of Heroes. So then So choosing to attack first, right? No blocks, no Wandering Emperor. However, still can't cast Destroy Evil on the Rafine. Does play the Rafine's Tower here. Likely just... What happened there? I Oh, he's got the, the, the peacekeeper on it. Right, right, right. 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 Yep. It's taxing it and further. And Ao, one of one of the better cards that is a recent-ish inclusion in a lot of these mid-range decks because it, it it just ensures that even if you kill the Ao, right, you can search, you can dig, find extra copies of Shieldred or Wandering Emperor and put it into play. Uh, not a whole lot of exile effects, right, in the format. A commonly played removal spell before was a card like Vanishing Verse. Mm -hmm. No longer legal, no longer a card people play. So AO's stock has definitely risen. And you've seen, at least in some lists, people look to play cards like Rona's Vortex specifically to have an answer to AO. That's a one of for Logan. One, I, I believe it's one main, maybe one sideboard, something That's like true. that. That's true, one main, one side. You got that Destroy Evil, it's great, but it's like, there's so many good targets, do you really even want to kill the AO? So this is, this is kind of tough. At the same time, Logan is at eight, and he's got a Shieldred in play. Excuse me, Jim has a Shieldred in play. Jim really wants to use that mana. 
You see Jim actually shake his head a little bit there. Anytime you're going to kill AO, <laughs> doesn't feel oh, good. Oh, no. All right. Let's see if uh, Logan Nettles can hit something sweet here. He's considering first his first option, which is does he want to do the seven so, cards or does he want to put the counters? Interestingly, Logan, since he boarded out the shield grids, his only, the only four mana cards you can get at least are Obscura Interceptors, which aren't so great. Yep. And Wandering Emperor, and he has one in play. Okay. But, again, you can get plenty of great three drops, right? Yes. Or two two drops. Well, that's what's that? going to happen here. And remember, the wedding uh, festivities down there is pumping up everything. So even something smaller like a, a Denik and a Tenacious Underdog, I mean, that's seven power he just added to the battlefield. Now, he does still have to find some way to deal with Shieldred, though, right? I mean, he's at eight. He does. He'll start hurting at some point. He does, but Logan did find a Denik, right? That is a life-linking creature, so can help, right? You can, you can give it a plus one, plus one counter with the Wandering Emperor, get in, do some scheming. Not too much scheming. Right, you don't want to over-scheme <laughs> in a situation like this. Logan hoping to find an answer for Shieldred the Apocalypse. If he can, then you got to love his position. Absolutely, Ed. He's the one with the Planeswalker and the Anthem Effect in play. Mm -hmm. You can see Rafine joins the battlefield for Jim Davis. Nice little one-two punch here. Shieldred plus Rafine. You get to gain six life here. Boy, that's an attack there. 26 is life total for Jim Davis, so he's not dying anytime soon to attackers at least. Right, and I wonder if Logan just once is going to get Jim to f just force Jim to use the Plaza of Heroes by going for a double block here on Children. It's like, all right, I don't want to play against this land anymore. Use it now, and then the coast will be clear, right? Because... If you force him to use it now, all of a sudden on the next turn, you can go Wandering Emperor, exile the Shieldred. Right. Yeah, this actually works out really well for no Logan. I mean, he does lose the creatures, but... Right, but two of the creatures are, you know, Whatever's. cards you can cast back from the graveyard, right? And it looks like he wants to trade the underdog for the Anointed Peacekeeper as well which is still kind of putting in an annoying tax on the Wandering Emperor. Right. So when the dust settles here, we're left with a Rafine on Logan's side. Jim Davis will have a Shieldred, which Logan will likely want to get rid of next turn. So that's going to be off the battlefield. And then Logan has the option of disturbing the Denik. And using Wandering Emperor to kill the Shieldred. Right. Okay. A land off the top here for Nettles. Would have liked an untapped land to play both cards from the graveyard. Mm -hmm. This does seem like a great opportunity to get that shielded off the battlefield. And it looks like Logan is going to take that opportunity. He's at nine life, and so remember, he's okay. The, when you disturb Denik, you only get the clue if a creature goes into the graveyard. So when it gets ah. exiled, you will not get a clue token. This is going to be a nice flyer here, though. A 4-3 in the air. And that gives you the option for a double block on the opposing Rafine. Or even better, just get in with your own. Oh! Hello, Destroy wow. Evil. And does he, right. he actually has the mana, too. Right. You just pitched a tower, killed the Rafine, get a clue token. Wow, Big this was a here huge for swing for Logan this turn. Everything just fell apart. Wow. And Jim's not going to like to see the, oh, yeah, yeah you can see yeah, that was yeah, not yeah, the one yeah. he wanted to hit. And that probably is going to be enough for Logan to push through for a win here. Now, he does have work to do. 24 is Jim Davis's life total, so we're not done yet. Not done but yet. double tenacious underdog going. And remember, those are bigger, too. Wedding festivities is doing work. He's got the clue token. Yeah, and, and again, I mean, Jim doesn't have any, he doesn't have an underdog in Graveyard, doesn't have anything to do. 
Meanwhile, Logan, now, I mean, this is why this deck can grind with the best of them, right? Yes. You have those extra creatures, you can play in the late game. Man, this is the avalanche, right? This, this is where it all just comes right together. <laughs> Interesting decision here, right? Both cards have utility, both lands. Yeah, one of them just outright kills your opponent's only threat, but your opponent's only threat is just a 2-2. And Plaza of Heroes to protect Rafine could be good. I mean, one of the, you know, the question is, what if Jim top decks a way to kill Rafine? If Jim top decks a way to kill Rafine, Logan's down to seven. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it does seem like you want to protect the Rafine. Now, you can also protect the Rafine with Odawara. Yes. Right? It's... So you have a little more flexibility there, right? If if Jim tries to kill it, you can bounce it. But if Jim plays a problematic permanent, you can also have that option of using that Otawara to to re, to bounce in uh, in AO, for example. No, oh, looks like he's just going to go for the token right now. Logan Edel's protecting his life total at all costs, and this is just going to be a cold top deck here for Jim Jim Davis, and he needs some of the more powerful stuff in his library to show up ASAP. Is there, is there a way to protect the token? I don't believe so. Is he just doing it on his main phase? Yep. Okay. okay, well, it was a wedding announcement. A little slow, but it does produce a board state for you. It does. Oh. Okay. And but again, I mean, Logan this Edel's is... looking to ride this tenacious underdog for the win. Another good reason to protect your life total. Oh, yeah, just, just continuing to find more threats here. Getting in for potential nine damage this turn. Yeah, I'm just trying to just two turn clock this thing. If Davis has to chump lock with the wedding announcement tokens, you got to figure that that's a losing proposition for him as well. Yeah. Jim's got to deal with what, what? What are we looking at here? Five eight Rafine. Yeah, could be. Yeah, and it is. Wow. Game one was really easy for Logan Nettles. Game two has been a lot tougher, but he's put himself in a position to win. He's going to get a card off the underdog here as well. And he's and, really been able to kind of avalanche his card advantage. Right. And gets to play the other underdog here. Probably just playing out the land here too, just because he has so much to do with his mana, with the Denik in the yard, yeah. with a clue token. With whatever this is. This thing. That's wow, a thing. Oh, a cut down. That gets one of the chump blockers out of the way, and, and that's it. Yeah, shipwreck, ship, shipwreck marsh off the top of the library there for Jim Davis. A rough round for him. Yeah, you know, give, giving up that first game on a mulligan to five, never hitting your third land drop in a timely fashion is a tough way to start. And this was just a good hard-fought battle, but it looks like Logan either drew or just had a few more of those mid to late game cards that you really want. It's tenacious underdog. <laughs> okay, underdogs. Um, really helped him, right? I mean, he was drawing extra cards, applying a lot of pressure with those in the late game. Yeah, I mean, Logan was ahead, but Jim did have that Rafine to give him hope. But the moment that Logan drew into that destroy evil, that pretty much kind of sealed it. Yeah, and you could see it on Jim's face when he saw that that was one of the cards that Logan hit. It lined up perfectly with how that turn went as well. He had exactly enough mana left over to take it down. I think Logan just needs to consider a potential wandering run here. He's like, can I die if there's a wandering emperor somehow? Because you can kill the Rafine, gain two life. Jim patiently waiting for his medicine. We know, of course, that Logan will at least attack with all three of these creatures, then that will lock it up here. Right. Jim on just a land card in hand. Bit of a bluff. But that will not stop Logan Nettles as he attacks with all three of his creatures. And that's going to do it. It's going to be a lethal attack. And Jim oh. Davis can do nothing. And a Wandering Emperor here, too. Yeah, why not? Why not? 
Just a good old attack for 15. And there we go. Logan Nettles improves to 5-2. and two. And that is a great way to start day one. Still one more round to go here from the World Championship. But Logan, he's on track. Yeah. If he can keep this pace up, he will be in our top four. Yeah, I mean, after this win, Logan, we're, he is exactly at the halfway point, right? We're looking yes. at a 14-round Swiss tournament. Again, 32-player field. You go 5-2, and two, then you go 5-2 and two again. Really, really good shot at a top four brick. That's right, five and two for for Logan Nettles. Jim Davis is going to have to settle for a four three. Now, if you watch a lot of tournament coverage, you'll think, "Well, that's not very good. Like he's kind of just barely hanging on." Not true. With a win next round, he could be five and three coming into day number two, and that is a perfectly good record.